I love the cold weather. I like looking out and seeing how the wind can bring about change. It can take the old dead leaves off of the trees, you know, and cause people to bundle up and get warm too. Maybe consider, you know, the foundation that they built their house upon when the winds blow and the storms come. I like storms. You know, have you ever thought about who the enemy is to your soul? Who the real culprit is that's your worst nightmare come true? Have you figured out yet that the most deadly virus out there, the most insidious phishing, P-H-I-S-H-I-N-G, site there is, the most decrepit, ooh, evil thing that can trip you up is you. Yep. Sorry. We are our own worst enemies. Satan can't do anything to us that we don't participate in. As a matter of fact, God can't do anything with us that we don't participate in. Because we can either rebel or we can obey. God doesn't look at an in-between state where we say, oh, well, not now. And we try to play grace off to say, oh, well, we'll just wait until we've extended grace to its limit. And then before we cross that line, we'll accept God's will. It doesn't work that way. You see, with God, the Father, there is obey, disobey. It's a fine line. Very fine. As a matter of fact, except that He choose to extend to you grace, forgiveness, mercy. You're on the wrong side of the line already. Sorry. Because except that you can say that Jesus knows you and that you know Him, you are already bound for hell. And you know how you got there? You did it. Yep, you did. From the moment you were born, you were selfish. You were fully consumed with yourself. You had to cry out for what you wanted. You had to take what you needed. You had to sustain your own life. There was no turning it over to God when you were born. There was no looking to Jesus for your salvation. There was no anything except give me, give me, 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 I, I. Conceived in sin, born in sin, die in sin. Accept that salvation come into your life as Jesus chooses to give it to you. You're your own worst enemy. But you could be your own salvation in one way. By the choices you make to give your choice over to God to make for you. By the choices you make to allow Him to make a determination for you. By allowing Him to be your salvation. Because you see, even after you have made the quote-unquote sinner's prayer, there's a lot of people who look like they're Christian. But Jesus said he never knew them. It doesn't mean about doing good works. But it does mean about getting to know them. It does mean about gradually becoming less about yourself and more about himself. So you see, you really are, pardon the expression, if you're a man, then I can say this. If you're a woman, well, you know, you could figure it out. But you really are, as far as God's concerned, a selfish bastard. You really have your own personal intent, your own personal salvation in mind. You're always about yourself, unless God chooses to speak through you. Because 
If he leaves you alone without his spirit for five minutes, it'll be about you. Because in your flesh, there dwelleth no good thing. Nothing. There is not one good thing about supposedly this outer temple that we live in that is good. This should have been, instead of it being called the temple of the Holy Spirit, should have been called the tabernacle of the Holy Spirit because the tabernacle had dead skins on the outside because where the presence of God was on the inside. Nothing holy about the outside. Sorry. I know there are people that want to try to make this body, you know, healthy, wealthy, wise, you know, and try to, well, let's build up this decaying, corrupted flesh into some kind of structure for God, you know, to make it look like it's really kind of neat, you know, we'll just, you know, glaze it over, we'll paint it up a little bit, you know, we'll put some makeup on it, you know, we'll, we'll make the pig look like it's got lipstick, you know, and make it look like it's pretty and pretend it's the temple of the Holy Spirit when in reality it's just a tabernacle. So why are you so consumed with yourself? When Jesus said, it's not about you. That's the point. You are your own worst enemy. But you could be your own best friend in one way. If you would turn, if you would seek, if you would call upon the name of the Lord, you would not only be saved, but he would save you from yourself. Because every man, woman and child, has the ability to deceive themselves. They do it every day. They tell themselves, I'm assured of salvation. Really? Let me find that assurance of salvation, quote unquote, in parentheses, written that way in scripture, in the Bible. We have an assurance that God will save us and that God has put into us a down payment for that salvation. That he has promised us certain things, but an assurance? I think when you start talking about assurances, you start acting in a different way, don't you? Make your calling and election sure. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling, I agree. But in my mind, once saved, always saved to anyone, giving them assurances that they can tell themselves that they're saved, it makes me think of self-deception rather than perception that it's by the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed and because his loving kindness fails not they are new every morning but should God decide as he would said in the book of Matthew in the Sermon on the Mount that he never knew you where would our salvation be if Jesus says depart from me? where indeed Let's not deceive ourselves with theologies of men or ideas we have of ourselves. But rather, let's look at the scriptures of what they say we are and then do something about it. Let's not be our own worst enemy, but let's find that our best friend ought to be Jesus, who can tell us the truth about ourselves when we can't face the fact of who we really are, sinners. From self to God. The eternal God is thy refuge, Deuteronomy 33:27, A place to flee to, a sanctuary, an escape from misunderstanding from yourself. You can get away from others into the quiet of your own being, but from yourself, from that sense of your failure, your weakness, your sins, your shortcomings, your selfishness. Where can you flee from that? How can you tell when you don't know whether or not you are righteous in God's eyes, perfect in God's eyes, holy in God's eyes, or really need to make some changes in God's eyes? Maybe there's a time and a place for all of those things to be true in your life. 
But you can't just be assured and reassured that living in sin till the day you die will give you eternal life. Maybe there's something that might be missing in that understanding of scripture that might involve a relationship with God of him speaking to you about you and not you reading for yourself what you want to hear. To the eternal God, your refuge, till in his immensity you forget your smallness, meanness, and limitations. To the relief of safety merges into joy of appreciation of your refuge, and you absorb the divine and absorb and gain strength to conquer yourself by finding yourself in himself. Because you see, as you turn to God and envelop yourself in him, you ask him to envelop himself in you so that at some point in time it's no longer I that liveth but Christ that liveth in me. As long as it's I, you're heading for hell. When it's him, you're heading for heaven. It's that simple. It's always been that simple and yet People are going to pass by what's being said now. They're going to ignore what it just came across about self-deception and you being your worst enemy. If it's about you, you're missing the point. If it's about him, you've got the right direction. It's always been and always will be all about Jesus.